So as you saw from the thumbnail, I'm going to show you all how to take a roughly 10 pound pork shoulder and turn it into three completed meals and have some for the freezer. So first up is pulled pork lo mein. And after we get that in the crock pot, I'm going to show you all a very simple barbecue pulled pork recipe using this little package so that we can use it in a few days for another recipe. Super excited for today's slow cooker recipe. It is slow cooker lo mein using um, some pork shoulder. So I just bought a large pork shoulder that was almost 10 pounds and I sliced it up. This is about three and a half pounds. However, it does have a bone in and this large piece of fat. So meat wise, it's probably about two, two and a half pounds which is right what this recipe calls for. So I've got my pork shoulder down in the bottom of the crock pot and we're gonna move it to the side and make our sauce. So we are changing up um, not quite a bit as far as the ingredients go, but quite a bit from how the recipe reads. I read a ton of the comments and some of the things they had in common were fresh vegetables were not cooking in a proper time so we're substituting frozen vegetables and I also read that there just wasn't enough sauce for the amount of noodles and meat so I'm doubling the sauce recipe today. So I've got to keep myself straight as I read the recipe. We're starting with two-thirds of a cup of soy sauce. I'm choosing to use low sodium just because that's my personal preference. Six cloves of minced garlic four tablespoons of packed brown sugar, two tablespoons of a chili paste or something of the like. I could not find it at my local grocery store, so I picked up this chili pepper crunch the other day, and we had it on some of our breakfast yesterday also, and it was delicious. But we're going to give this a try, and it looks like it's basically a lot of red pepper flakes and some other types of chilies down um, infused in some oil. So if you don't like spice, I would say be cautious with this. You could probably use some sriracha or something like that also. But if you really don't like spice, I would probably cut this in half at least. But you still want it to give some of the flavor. And we also need two tablespoons of oyster sauce two teaspoons of sesame oil. I do use toasted sesame oil. And then two tablespoons of freshly grated ginger. So you see I just keep mine in the freezer and it makes it super simple to shave off what you need. You could actually use a spoon to do this part also if it's frozen. And pick you up a large chunk of ginger from the grocery store. It lasts a long time and it's super cheap. And that's it for our sauce mixture. I'm just mixing it all together. And we're just going to pour this over our pork shoulder and let it cook on low for about six or seven hours. All right, y'all. So I checked on this about an hour and a half ago, and it was far from being ready. So I went ahead and I turned it up to high. I also removed the bone and quite a bit of this fat and after adding that hour and a half on high this meat is definitely much more tender. So I'm going to shred this up. Now I'm going to add in this 20 ounce bag of sugar snap pea stir fry. It's got sugar snap peas, broccoli, green beans, squash, peppers, carrots, yellow peppers, water chestnuts which are not my huge favorite. But this was the closest all-in-one bag that I could find that um, were the same or really similar veggies to what, um, to what they were calling for. I have some extra broccoli and carrots that I can toss in if it doesn't seem like it's enough veggies for us. All right, so I'm gonna put the lid back on this and let this cook, and while this cooks, I'm going to cook our noodles on the stove top. So our noodles are all done, and we're just going to pour them in. 
and let's stir this all around. So our veggies still need a little bit more time to cook, so we're gonna cover this and let it keep going. While this finishes cooking, I'm gonna make some spring rolls in the oven. Okay, so the kids are getting restless. They're hungry and ready to eat. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a taste test and see how it turned out. So I can see why a lot of the comments said not enough juice because we doubled the recipe and I think it's just perfect. So I could only imagine if we didn't have any of that extra. So we're gonna try and grab a piece of meat, some noodles with the sauce and veggie all at the same time. So the meat is delicious. The noodles are good. The veggies definitely still need a little bit more time. And we're at the 30 minute mark right now. But the flavor is there and that's what's key. This is awesome. I know this is gonna sound weird, but it smells like a Chinese restaurant. Like the smell, the seasoning, the spices are just, they're spot on. So I am tickled pink to have this recipe. This is one we're going to definitely have to add to the general rotation. We cooked a few spring rolls. We're gonna to toss those on some, the side for some texture difference, but this is awesome. Five and a half out of five. So I know that's not how you're supposed to go, but five out of five, perfect. Love it. It's even got a little kick, but not too much for the kiddos. So. So winner, winner, Chinese takeout dinner. So our very, very simple pulled pork is just four ingredients as far as the seasoning go. It's one packet of this pulled pork seasoning mix. I like the McCormick's. And you're gonna start with a third of a cup of apple cider vinegar. Add in half a cup of ketchup, half a cup of packed brown sugar, and our seasoning pack. We're just gonna whisk this all together. I have three pounds of that pork that we roughly trimmed up and I've put down into my Ninja Foodi. I'm just searing the edges of it. If you wanna skip that step, that is quite all right. It just adds a little bit, well, it adds a lot to the flavor. So you can choose to cook this two ways. You can put it in your Instant Pot or pressure cooker, or you can cook it on slow. The directions are on the back of the package. So it says eight hours in the slow cooker, about 60 minutes in the pressure cooker. So I'm going pressure cooker mode. So our pulled pork is all finished. We're gonna shred it up, bag some for the freezer, and then save about a pound of this for our dinner on Wednesday. Okay, so it's church night, so y'all know what that means. Super quick, throw together recipe needed for dinner so we can get homework done and out the door in time for Bible study. So tonight is that pulled pork cornbread casserole. So this is our pulled pork that we made the other day from that pork shoulder that we chopped up and cooked, a can of Mexi corn, or you can use a full like 15 ounce, 14 and a half ounce, whatever it is, of cream corn. I know y'all have told me over and over again you do not like the Jiffy, but we do. Substitute in your own homemade cornbread if you want. A couple of eggs, half a cup of milk, some cheese that we've shredded up, a little extra barbecue sauce if we need it, and that is it. This will be our entire meal all in one. Is it the healthiest? No. Is it delicious? Yes. So the oven is preheating to 400 right now. We're gonna take our bowl, dump in our cornbread mix, our half a cup of milk, two eggs, our corn that we drained, and one cup of that cheese we have shredded up. I'm gonna mix this all together. You could change this up so, so many ways. You could add some beans, you could add some, even some barbecue beans would be super delicious in this. We keep it simple and add a little bit of jalapenos on the top for the adults that like it. Eleanor will add some black olives to hers most likely and that will be it. So normally I prefer to make my cornbread in a cast iron skillet. However, this will overflow my cast iron so we use this nine by 13. We're just gonna spray it. And yes, I know the spray causes cancer. 
Y'all told me a lot. And I figure I got to meet Jesus sometime. So I continue to use it. We're emptying our mix down into our pan. We'll spread it out a little bit. And this will go in the oven at 400 while we heat up our pulled pork just a little bit. If you didn't want to heat your pulled pork on the stovetop, it can go on cold, but mine's been in the freezer for a couple of days. So I need to thaw it out a little bit. Okay, so our 20 minutes is up and our cornbread has come out. We're just spooning over this barbecue pulled pork. Like I said, if yours is just cold and uh, not frozen like mine was, you don't have to reheat it beforehand. Just throw it on cold because we're popping it back in the oven to warm all the way through and let those juices seep down into it. And if you wanted to, you could thicken these juices just a little bit more and use those as a sauce. I'm going to pour a little bit over it. I'm going to add just a little bit extra barbecue sauce. Our other cup of cheese. And back in the oven this goes for about 10 more minutes. And it's all done. Y'all hear the bubbling, sizzling goodness? I'm going to slice it up so y'all can see the layers. But that is it. Dinner is super quick and done. Our next recipe we're making is pork pozole. Now if y'all have been with us for a while, you've seen us make this several times. We love pork pozole, especially my youngest son. This is just a pork soup with very Mexican style flavors and it's very, very, very scrumptious. We're starting with a pound of pork shoulder that we've just cubed up and seared in our Ninja Foodie. I've turned it down to slow cooker function and we're gonna add in one large diced onion. To our onions and pork, we're gonna add one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes, two cans of chipotle sauce. This does give it a pretty good kick so so if you don't like spicy foods, I would probably just use one and replace the other flavoring with a second can of diced tomatoes. Next we're going to add one large can of hominy that we have rinsed and drained. Typically at this point I would add one large heaping tablespoon of minced garlic, however I'm out, so I'm substituting with two tablespoons of granulated garlic, one tablespoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of black pepper, and five cups of chicken broth. I am, however, using five bouillon cubes and adding five cups of water. And we'll just cover this and let this cook on low for about 10 hours. This is one of those wonderful recipes that you can let go literally the whole day. So our pozole is all finished. It's been simmering away all day. So we're gonna serve it up. And I know it doesn't look like much, but I'm telling y'all the depth of flavor in this is awesome. And this is some of our usual toppings. Um, I don't have cilantro, I thought I did, but I can't find it in the fridge. So you can add a ton of different toppings, but we like some like tortilla chips, some cabbage, a little bit of queso fresco or cojito, if that's how you say it, uh, avocado. These are our main toppings and usually, like I said, cilantro. So we're just gonna serve up a bowl and I'll let y'all see what it looks like. But hopefully you give this super simple, very, very warm and yummy food a try.